In the sweltering summer of 2003, the vibrant coastal town of Blue Harbor, nestled on the eastern shores of Australia, became the epicenter of an event that would etch itself into the annals of history. At the heart of this tale were three individuals bound by their adventurous spirits and unyielding curiosity for the marine world. The trio comprised marine biologist Dr. Sarah Mitchell, her childhood friend and experienced diver David Dave Wallace, and the fearless wildlife photographer Emily Thompson. United by a shared dream, they embarked on a mission to unravel the mysteries surrounding the hammerhead sharks. The team initiated their expedition aboard the Sea Whisperer, a vessel equipped with state-of-the-art technology to facilitate their research. As they anchored near a renowned yet unnamed shark habitat, the trio couldn't help but be mesmerized by the beauty surrounding them. Sarah, the brain behind the operation, had dedicated years to studying marine life, particularly interested in hammerhead sharks. Her knowledge was complemented by Dave's expertise in diving and Emily's knack for capturing the most breathtaking moments through her lens. Together, they formed a formidable team, ready to delve deeper into the shark's habitat. Days turned into weeks as they meticulously documented the behaviors and patterns of the hammerhead sharks from the safety of their boat. Their efforts bore fruit as they managed to tag several sharks, a milestone that would aid in the conservation efforts of these endangered species. Yet as they delved deeper into their research, a lingering desire to experience the world of these creatures up close beckoned, a call too potent to resist. In the early hours of a fateful day, the team prepared for a daring endeavor to bring them face to face with the hammerhead sharks. Sarah and Dave would descend into the ocean in a specially designed cage, a fortress of steel and clear acrylic that promised safety, yet offered an unobstructed view of the marine life. Emily remained on board, her role pivotal in documenting the expedition through live footage, her heart pounding as she equipped Sarah and Dave with cameras to capture their descent into the deep. As the cage submerged, Sarah and Dave were greeted by a surreal underwater landscape, a world of vibrant corals and diverse marine life. The initial moments were awe and wonder as they encountered various marine species, their hearts swelling with reverence for the beauty that unfolded before them. Yet as they ventured deeper, the atmosphere shifted, the waters grew colder, and a sense of foreboding enveloped them. The duo communicated through hand signals, their experienced eyes scanning the surroundings, aware that they were not alone. Shadows darted in the periphery, and the hammerhead shark's unmistakable silhouette became increasingly apparent. The creatures circled, their movements graceful yet assertive, a dance of the predators in their natural habitat. As Sarah and Dave observed, a deep understanding of these majestic creatures began to form, a realization of the delicate balance that existed in this underwater realm. Yet amidst this profound experience, the unexpected occurred. A large scarred hammerhead, a veteran of many battles, approached the cage, its eyes scrutinizing the intruders, setting the stage for a confrontation that would test the boundaries of fear and courage. The large scarred hammerhead circled the cage cautiously, its piercing eyes scrutinizing Sarah and Dave, the intruders in its domain. Once a place of wonder and discovery, the ocean suddenly transformed into a theater of suspense, where every movement held a breath of danger. Although seasoned in their fields, Sarah and Dave could not shake off the growing unease as the gigantic shark exhibited signs of aggression. Back on the Sea Whisperer, Emily monitored the situation with bated breath, her hands trembling as she held onto the camera, capturing the intense moments unfolding beneath the ocean's surface. The live feed transmitted to the boat, revealed the increasing number of hammerhead sharks converging around the cage, drawn by the presence of the colossal leader. Sarah and Dave maintained a composed demeanor, their training kicking in as they avoided sudden movements that could potentially provoke the sharks. The cage, their only barrier against the formidable predators, held strong, the steel bars showcasing no signs of giving in. Yet the tension escalated as the leader exhibited signs of irritation, its swift movements creating turbulent currents that rocked the cage violently. Minutes felt like hours as the duo endured the relentless scrutiny of the hammerhead sharks, their hearts pounding in their chests as they witnessed nature's raw and untamed power. Sarah attempted to document the leader's behavior, 
her hands shaking as she maneuvered the camera to capture the unprecedented event. As the situation grew increasingly dire, a realization dawned upon Dave. The sharks were reacting to a distress signal emitted by a wounded fish nearby, a phenomenon that often incited feeding frenzies. Understanding the situation's urgency, Dave signaled to Sarah, formulating a quick yet risky plan to divert the shark's attention. With a nod of agreement, Sarah reached out to a container attached to the cage, releasing a concoction of organic materials designed to mimic the scent of a large school of fish, a natural deterrent for hammerhead sharks. As the substance dispersed into the water, a remarkable change occurred. The sharks began to disperse, their attention diverted by the potent scent that signaled competition for food. On the boat, Emily coordinated with the crew to initiate the emergency retrieval procedure. The winch whirring to life as it hoisted the cage back to the surface. As the cage broke the surface, the crew rushed forward, pulling Sarah and Dave out of the water, their bodies shaking from the adrenaline and the cold. Back at Blue Harbor, the trio reunited, their bond stronger than ever, forged through the trials they had faced together. The footage captured during the expedition became a sensation, offering a rare glimpse into the world of the hammerhead sharks. Sarah, Dave, and Emily continued their marine research, and their respect and understanding for marine life deepened through their harrowing experience. Their story of courage, resilience, and the unyielding pursuit of knowledge became a beacon of inspiration. This tale echoed with the spirit of adventure and the profound respect for the creatures of the deep. In the summer of 1994, while on vacation in China, Arav, an energetic 18-year-old college student, found himself craving adventure. Arav's heart belonged to the rivers and seas that caressed the shores of China, even though his home was there. He could no longer resist the urge to see the water, especially one summer. Arav decided to tell his father about his ambition, since even though he had visited the beach many times, he had never seen his son's enthusiasm for the concept. Even though he was accustomed to the beach, he consented to go on this adventure with Arav in a touching show of fatherly affection. They had decided to take advantage of a Sunday holiday together. Arav woke up early on that fateful Sunday morning, excited for the adventure ahead. Following a substantial breakfast, he grabbed a tiny camera and other supplies for their day excursion. Arav was excited to tell his father about this desire because he had always supported the family and didn't hesitate to give his kids special moments. The sun shone brightly as they arrived at the beach, illuminating the crowd of people enjoying themselves. When Arav saw a board for hire, he persuaded his father to sail with him. His father had never been to the beach before, but gave in to his son's contagious enthusiasm and accepted without hesitation. Unquestionably, there is a unique quality to experiencing the world through the eyes of a loved one, mainly when that loved one is as ardent as Arav. They started their underwater journey after renting the board and having Arav's father pay for the expenses. Arav was a whirlwind of activity, shouting to his father and striking up conversations with the seaside inhabitants. With the sound of the waves as their constant companion and the sea wind blowing through their hair, their voyage had already been unforgettable. But that day, fate had more in store for them. They were met with an amazing and unanticipated encounter as they glided through the serene waters. The giant tiger shark they had ever seen surfaced from the depths. Even though Arav was initially excited to see such a magnificent animal, he couldn't help but get a chill of terror. It was a rendezvous with one of the most formidable predators in the ocean. Therefore, this was no ordinary encounter. They felt goosebumps as the enormous tiger shark glided gracefully and powerfully toward their boat. It made a circle around the board, almost like it was these two intrepid travelers. The enormous shark made another pass, slamming into the board, as Arav's heart raced and his terror intensified. Arav lost his balance due to the crash, which sent shockwaves through the small craft. His arms were slightly bruised as the shark's muscular body brushed against them during the following mayhem. The board wobbled alarmingly, tipping over and causing panic. Swiftly moving, the board's operator expertly steered it across the safety area and away from the shark that was drawing near. Despite the terrible situation, Arav's father attempted to reassure his son in a moment of bravery and love. He tried to contain Arav's dread despite the confusion and adrenaline rush. 
but things were serious, and Arav needed emergency medical attention for his injuries. Arav's father immediately made plans for their son to be taken urgently to the hospital. After receiving immediate and meticulous care for his arm, Arav regained full use after six months of recovery and therapy. Arav and his father's relationship grew stronger due to their shared experience on that awful day. They understood that the greatest remarkable experiences in life frequently resulted from chance meetings and difficulties. Though not in the way he had anticipated, Arav's desire to see the water had materialized. With the same enthusiasm that had driven his ambition to explore the sea, Arav continued to pursue his studies and profession in the following years. He will never forget the day he faced the biggest tiger shark head-on, and the lessons he learned from it have stuck with him ever since, reminding him of the wonder and unpredictable nature of the natural world. Nella, a 27-year-old woman from a small town in Australia, lived a modest life as part of a middle-class family. She had forged her path by working in various roles across different TV channels, contributing to producing multiple advertisements. Nella was fiercely independent and took pride in earning money to sustain her life. However, as is often the case in life, change and adventure can come when you least expect them. One day, Nella found herself in an unusual situation. She had no ongoing projects, and her days at home began to feel monotonous and dull. Her life had always been filled with the hustle and bustle of her work in the television industry. And suddenly, the tranquility of her small town seemed stifling. During this restlessness period, Nella received an unexpected call from the company she frequently collaborated with. They had an intriguing proposition for her, something that would break the monotony of her daily routine. The project they proposed involved capturing footage of the depths of the ocean. It was an opportunity that piqued her curiosity and without much hesitation, she agreed to participate. The company offered a reasonable compensation package and, in a gesture of support, covered all expenses related to transportation and accommodation. The chance to embark on this unique adventure was too tempting for Nella to resist. On the 23rd of March, the designated date for the shoot, a team from the company arrived at Nella's doorstep to pick her up. Her excitement was palpable as she envisioned the protocol and preparations involved in such a captivating endeavor. They embarked on a journey to the open sea, with half of the team members already stationed there, eagerly awaiting the arrival of the rest. As Nella prepared for this extraordinary experience, the team provided her with a specialized swimmer's outfit and a waterproof camera. The thought of what lay beneath the ocean's surface filled her with anticipation and wonder. Before commencing the shoot, Nella felt a sudden thirst. The team offered her a refreshing drink, and after quenching her thirst, she slipped into her swimwear and was ready to immerse herself in this unique opportunity. The team had arranged for a rental ship for the shoot, and as they sailed towards the middle of the sea, Nella plunged into the water, her camera capturing the mysteries of the deep. In the awe-inspiring beauty of the ocean's depths, Nella discovered herself in a fascinating underwater world. However, as she continued her shoot, an unexpected and chilling moment disrupted her tranquility. A massive shark suddenly materialized nearby, its predatory instincts aroused, and it homed in on Nella. Fear gripped her, but she summoned every ounce of strength and swam away as swiftly as her limbs could propel her. The undeterred shark persisted in its pursuit, its unyielding determination evident in its relentless pursuit of her. Despite the excruciating pain and the terror coursing through her, Nella refused to give in to despair. She continued to swim for her life, her injured arm a constant reminder of her peril. It was a life-or-death struggle that unfolded beneath the azure waves. Finally, Nella reached the sanctuary of the ship, gasping for breath and screaming for help. The team, oblivious to the unfolding drama, sprang into action, hoisting her back onto the vessel. The sight that met their eyes was nothing short of a nightmare. Nella's injured arm and the colossal shark that circled beneath them. The team acted swiftly, understanding the gravity of the situation. They arranged for Nella to receive immediate medical attention. Doctors examined her injuries and recommended a two-day hospital stay to facilitate her recovery. In the confines of the hospital, Nella began the slow healing process. Her family, deeply concerned about her well-being, anxiously awaited news of her progress. Over time, they breathed a sigh of relief as Nella showed improvement. 
After her hospital stay, Nella returned home, her arm healing. But the memory of the terrifying shark attack scarred her psyche. The incident served as a stark reminder of the fragility of human life and the unpredictable nature of the natural world. Meanwhile, back at the company, a seemingly forgotten detail emerged from the depths, the footage from Nella's camera. In their rush to ensure Nella's safety, they had neglected to review the recorded material. When they finally found it, they were astounded by what they saw. The video captured the entire heart-pounding ordeal, showcasing Nella's incredible bravery when facing the menacing shark. Realizing the potential impact of the footage, the company decided to share it on its channel. The video swiftly garnered widespread attention, with viewers captivated by Nella's extraordinary courage in the face of a life-threatening predator. The video elicited admiration and generated substantial profits for the company, thanks to Nella's remarkable efforts and captivating narrative. As Nella continued her journey to full recovery, the company recognized her exceptional bravery and unwavering dedication. They offered her a permanent position within the organization, acknowledging her as a valuable asset. While grateful for the professional opportunity, Nella could never erase the indelible memory of the harrowing shark attack from her mind. The sun hung low on the horizon, casting a warm golden hue over Hurdy Beach, located on the outskirts of southern Sydney, Australia. It was the kind of picturesque evening that drew surfers from near and far to its inviting waves. Among them was Daniel Mitchell, a 29-year-old surfer who had always felt a deep connection to the sea. Hurdy Beach was a gem of a location known for its relatively uncrowded waves and the pristine, untouched beauty of its shoreline. Rugged cliffs flanked the beach, their weathered faces standing sentinel against the relentless tides. Seagulls soared in the sky, and the rhythmic crash of the surf created a mesmerizing symphony. Daniel was an experienced surfer, and the thrill of riding the waves was a passion that ran deep in his veins. Today, he ventured out alone, paddling his board about 100 meters from the shore. The waves were inviting, their frothy peaks promising an exhilarating ride, and he couldn't resist their call. With each powerful stroke, Daniel propelled himself further from the safety of the shoreline. With the taste of salt on his lips and the crisp sea breeze in his hair, he felt a profound sense of freedom. Hurdy Beach had always been a sanctuary for him, where the world's problems disappeared in the face of the ocean's endless horizon. But on this fateful evening, the tranquil facade of the sea held a lurking danger. Beneath the surface, a shadowy figure moved with predatory grace. It was a bull shark, drawn to the commotion of surfers and the promise of an easy meal. Its sleek form glided stealthily through the water, unseen by those on the surface. The other surfers out in the water were oblivious to the approaching danger, each immersed in their pursuit of the perfect wave. As Daniel scanned the horizon for the next set, the shark closed the distance, its predatory instincts honed to perfection. In a sudden, brutal surge, the bull shark lunged from the depths, jaws agape, and clamped down on Daniel's thigh. The force of the attack was staggering, and the vastness of the ocean swallowed Daniel's agonized cry. His board was sent careening through the waves as he was pulled underwater, trapped by the relentless predator. The other surfers, their senses jolted by the sudden violence, sprang into action. With a mixture of fear and adrenaline, they fought through the churning surf, reaching for Daniel's flailing form. Desperation and determination fueled their efforts as they struggled to free him from the shark's deadly grip. Back on the beach, the scene had transformed from one of idyllic serenity to one of panic and chaos. Onlookers and fellow beachgoers, their voices rising in frantic alarm, watched in horror as the struggle unfolded. Emergency services were called, and the desperate plea for help resounded. The battle beneath the waves raged, a fierce contest of strength, survival, and primal instinct. Daniel, his vision blurred by the salt water, fought to maintain his composure in the face of unimaginable pain. The shark's grip on his thigh was unyielding, its teeth sinking more profoundly with each moment. As the surfers grappled with the shark, the sheer power of the predator became evident. Its massive body, well suited for the hunt, thrashed and writhed, refusing to relinquish its prey. With each passing second, the clock ticked down on Daniel's chances of survival. His breath grew shallow, and his strength waned as he continued to fight for his life. 
The surfers pulled and tugged, their faces etched with determination. But the shark remained an implacable foe. Amid the struggle, the first responders arrived on the scene. Lifeguards and paramedics, armed with equipment and expertise, dove into the water to aid in the rescue effort. Professional rescuers joined the surfers' hands, united in their mission to free Daniel from the shark's grip. The water was stained with blood, a grim testament to the ferocity of the battle unfolding. Despite the combined efforts of the rescuers, time had not been on Daniel's side. His body, battered and broken, had endured too much. The shark's relentless assault had taken its toll. And as they finally succeeded in prying the predator away, it was too late. Daniel's life had slipped away beneath the waves. In the aftermath of the tragedy, Daniel Mitchell's family grieved the loss of their beloved son and brother. The beach, with its untouched beauty, remained a place of memories and mourning. The bull shark, having returned to the depths, continued to roam the mysterious world of the ocean, a silent and enigmatic predator. Hurdy Beach, a haven for surfers and beachgoers, would always be different. The sea, with its ever-shifting moods, held a new layer of complexity. Daniel Mitchell's story, a tale of courage and the fragility of life in the face of nature's incredible power, became an unhappy chapter in the annals of the ocean's history. On a warm summer day in 1911, the sun began to set over the shimmering water of Aliwal Shoal, casting a warm, golden glow on the beach. Zuri Nwachukwu, a 15-year-old boy passionate about the ocean, stood at the edge of the surf with his two companions, Malik and Gamba, both 16 years old. They were eager to spend the evening riding the waves and enjoying their summer break. Aliwal Shoal is an enchanting submerged reef off the coast of KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. The beautiful tranquil water beckons adventurers and ocean enthusiasts alike. Its crystal clear waters and teeming marine life create an idyllic setting for swimmers, snorkelers, and divers. But beneath the serene surface lies a thrilling secret, the presence of the magnificent tiger sharks. With their striking striped patterns and imposing presence, they reign as the rulers of these waters. As Zuri and his friends walked into the water, they were having a great time laughing and splashing around. They had no idea that this day, which seemed so perfect, was about to become a terrifying experience they would never forget. The group was having so much fun, frolicking and splashing around, enjoying the freedom and joy of being on vacation. They didn't notice the dark shape lurking below them, watching their every move. Suddenly, they saw a dark fin coming out of the water, cutting through the waves like a quiet hunter. The three friends noticed it and looked at each other with curiosity. They had heard stories about sharks in these waters, but they never thought they would actually come face to face with one. The fin swam past Malik and Gamba, not paying any attention to them, and then it targeted Zuri. The massive 13-foot tiger shark moved incredibly fast, its cold, lifeless eyes fixed on him. Zuri's heart pounded in his chest as fear paralyzed him for a split second, before he turned and tried to make a desperate escape towards the shore. As the predator closed in, its movements were too swift for Zuri to react in time. With a vicious and relentless lunge, the monstrous tiger shark sank its razor-sharp teeth deep into Zuri's right calf, tearing through flesh and bone. The excruciating pain shot through his body, causing him to let out an agonizing scream that echoed across the water. Blood stained the once serene ocean as Zuri's cries for help were drowned by the terror that gripped his friends. Fear and panic overpowered them, and they ran frantically toward the safety of the beach, leaving Zuri to face the gruesome reality alone. As Zuri struggled against the currents in the water, the fierce shark attacked again, going after his right arm with its deadly maw. The impact was terrifying, and the powerful bite from the shark cut off Zuri's arm below the elbow causing a terrible and horrifying wound. The pain that hit Zuri was unbearable, overwhelming his senses and making it hard for him to see clearly. Despite the agony, Zuri tried his best to stay above the water using all his strength and determination. He kicked and paddled desperately with his remaining arm, but it was tough. Breathing became a struggle as he fought to stay afloat in the relentless waves, but the shark was not done yet. Driven by its insatiable hunger, it lunged at Zuri again, its lifeless eyes fixed on him with a chilling focus. In a wild and violent attack, the shark lunged at Zuri repeatedly, 
tearing into his abdomen and chest. The once serene and inviting waters were now transformed into a horrifying scene of carnage as the powerful predator shook Zuri's body with terrifying force as if he were a mere rag doll in its jaws. As the relentless assault continued, each passing moment became a desperate struggle for survival, with Zuri's life hanging by a thread. The overwhelming pain and shock began to take their toll on his body, pushing him to the brink of surrender. Meanwhile, Malik and Gamba, still close enough to witness the harrowing scene, were gripped with a paralyzing mixture of fear and disbelief. Their hearts pounded as they watched their friend's horrifying battle for survival. They were frozen in place, unable to comprehend the nightmarish reality unfolding before their eyes. The massive shark engulfed Zuri in a horrifying flash, its deadly jaws clamping on his mangled corpse. The once lively and energetic boy was now helpless, caught in the powerful grip of the unyielding predator. As the waves crashed around them, Zuri's lifeless and broken body was pulled further down into the deep and dark parts of the ocean. He vanished from the sight of those above the water as the sea hid the gruesome and terrifying scene. A short while later, the waves washed Zuri's remains ashore. They were barely recognizable as that of a human. They were a mangled mess of flesh and bone covered in bite marks and blood. They were a gruesome sight that shocked and horrified everyone who saw them. Both Malik and Gamba were among the eyewitnesses to the horrific events. They had witnessed their friend's brutal death and had done nothing to intervene. They had run away from him, leaving him to die alone. The trauma and guilt they felt would remain with them for the rest of their lives. Jaya, a 22-year-old Indian University student, was known for her exceptional intelligence and insatiable curiosity about the world. She had a close-knit group of friends who shared her passion for exploration, and they often discussed their dreams of traveling and experiencing new places together. Images of Australia's breathtaking sea and tales and experiences shared by other travelers caught Jaya's attention one day while browsing the internet. The allure of this distant land was irresistible to her, and without hesitation she decided to embark on a spontaneous journey to Australia the very next day. Excitement bubbled within her as she shared her plans with her friends. They were equally enthusiastic and decided to join her on this adventure. Together, they dreamed of a one-week tour filled with fun and the acquisition of new knowledge. Their discussions about the trip grew more frequent and animated as the university vacation approached. With the vacation finally in sight, they made concrete plans for their Australian adventure. Tickets were booked, accommodations were arranged, and the group began packing their bags eagerly. On February 12th, the day of their departure, they were ready to embark on this thrilling journey. Australia's natural beauty left them in awe, and they relished every moment there. When fatigue set in, they would return to their hotel room to rest and rejuvenate for the next day's adventures. One morning after a hearty breakfast, Jaya decided to capture some memorable moments. Armed with her camera, she began taking pictures of her friends against the picturesque backdrop of the sea. While she was engrossed in her photography, her friends decided to take a break, find a comfortable spot, and immerse themselves in leisurely reading. As Jaya continued documenting their journey through a video, she suddenly noticed something unsettling. The water seemed to be inching closer to her. Initially, she didn't think much of it, assuming it was a regular occurrence. She called out to her friends to join her, but they were engrossed in their activities and didn't pay much attention. However, as Jaya kept recording, she realized that the water was not receding but advancing rapidly toward her. Panic washed over her, and she desperately called her friends for help. Ignoring their initial reluctance, they rushed to her side. Amid this chaos, a terrifying event unfolded. A massive tiger shark emerged from the depths of the sea and collided with Jaya's board. Remarkably, she managed to maintain her balance, but the encounter left her afraid. The group of friends had heard stories of the dangers of tiger sharks and their worst fears were coming true. Seeing the shark approach once again, Jaya took quick action. She attempted to paddle her board away from the predator, hoping to outmaneuver it. However, the relentless tiger shark struck her board again, hitting it from the side. Jaya's friends were now frantic, shouting for her to return to safety. In a desperate bid to escape, Jaya did her best to paddle away as fast as possible. But the relentless tiger shark persisted. 
The situation grew increasingly dire, and her friends panicked as they witnessed the terrifying encounter. In sheer terror, the tiger shark made a final lunge and struck the side of Jaya's board with great force. A piece of equipment that had fallen into the water temporarily distracted the shark, and this impact caused the board to crack. Jaya seized an opportunity, frantically paddling away from the predator. With a mixture of relief and fear, she managed to put some distance between herself and the shark. Realizing her danger, her friends called for help and alerted the authorities. A cry for assistance echoed across the water, and the Coast Guard swiftly arrived to intervene. With their quick response, they managed to deter the tiger shark and ensure Jaya's safety. The shark, frustrated and foiled in its pursuit, disappeared into the depths of the sea. Trembling and traumatized, Jaya was rescued from the water and brought to the shore. Her friends rushed to her side, relieved she was safe but deeply shaken by the harrowing experience. They immediately contacted local hospital staff, who arrived promptly to tend to Jaya's injuries. The extent of her wounds was severe with significant blood loss. Jaya was rushed to the hospital, where doctors worked tirelessly to stabilize her condition. She underwent life-saving procedures and surgeries to address her injuries and blood loss. The situation was critical, and it took a considerable amount of time for Jaya to stabilize. Fortunately, Jaya's resilience and the medical team's efforts paid off, and she gradually began to recover. However, her road to full recovery was long and challenging. She remained in an Indian hospital for three grueling months, receiving continuous medical care and support. During this time, her friends had returned to India, unable to continue their journey without her. The incident shocked the entire university community, and many of her fellow students frequently visited the hospital to check on Jaya's condition and offer their support. As weeks turned into months, Jaya's condition improved, and she was eventually discharged from the hospital. Her friends were there to welcome her with open arms, relieved and overjoyed to see her on the path to recovery. The traumatic encounter with the tiger shark had left its mark on Jaya physically and emotionally. She underwent rehabilitation and counseling to help her cope with the incident's aftermath. Her friends were her unwavering support system throughout this challenging period, standing by her side as she regained her strength and confidence. While the trip to Australia had taken an unexpected and terrifying turn, it had also strengthened the bonds of friendship among Jaya and her friends. They had faced a life-threatening situation together and emerged from it with a newfound appreciation for each other and life itself. Jaya's story served as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the importance of safety when exploring unfamiliar environments. Her journey to recovery was a testament to her resilience and the power of friendship and community support. In the realm of the oceanic tapestry, where the azure waters met the sun-drenched shores of Serpentine Island in September 2000, a tale of primal encounters unfolded. On the canvas of this maritime haven, known only as Serpentine Island, Nature wove its intricate dance, and among its residents was an unassuming diver named Evan Mitchell. Serpentine Island, shrouded in the mystique of untamed beauty, beckoned adventure seekers and maritime enthusiasts alike. Its crystalline waters held secrets of the deep, and its coral-kissed reefs painted a mesmerizing backdrop for those who dared to explore beneath the surface. It was here, amidst the undulating seascapes, that Evan Mitchell found his calling as a guardian of the ocean's secrets. A seasoned diver, Evan devoted his life to unraveling the mysteries of the underwater realm. The rhythmic cadence of the ocean waves became his lullaby, and the dance of marine life his silent symphony. Serpentine Island was not just a geographical location for Evan. It was a sanctuary where he communed with the hushed voices of the sea. A silent predator patrolled the depths of this aquatic oasis, a hammerhead shark an ancient mariner of the ocean's enigma. The hammerhead's distinctive silhouette, with its flattened and laterally extended head, made it both an emblem of the ocean's wonders and a harbinger of untamed power. The waters surrounding Serpentine Island were its domain, a realm where the laws of survival played out in a relentless ballet. Unlike its more reclusive counterparts, the hammerhead shark embraced the spotlight. Its curious head, shaped like a T, allowed for superior binocular vision and depth perception, which set it apart in the underwater hierarchy. 
Known for assembling in warmer waters along coastlines and continental shelves, the Hammerhead was a denizen of the deep, a silent sentinel of the ocean's secrets. As Evan Mitchell prepared for another foray into the oceanic embrace, he marveled at the symbiotic relationship between predator and prey. The Hammerhead's presence added a layer of complexity to the aquatic tapestry, a reminder that beneath the serene surface lurked a realm of both beauty and danger. With its coral gardens and cerulean depths, Serpentine Island was a microcosm of this delicate balance, a stage where survival drama unfolded with each tide. Little did Evan know that the forthcoming dive would thrust him into the heart of this oceanic drama, where the dance of predator and prey would become a visceral reality. The rhythmic pulse of the island's waves masked the impending encounter, setting the stage for a tale that would resonate through the oceanic corridors. And so, with the sun casting its golden embrace upon Serpentine Island in September 2000, Evan Mitchell descended into the aquatic realm, unaware that the Hammerhead's silhouette would soon become an indelible part of his maritime chronicle. The saline currents whispered tales of ancient marine rites as Evan descended into the ocean's embrace. The Hammerhead Shark, an ancient mariner, had detected Evan's intrusion into its domain, triggering an automatic response. With swift precision, the Hammerhead closed the distance between them. Its predatory instincts honed by millennia of evolution, it zeroed in on Evan, its powerful form slicing through the water with lethal grace. In an abrupt surge of energy, the shark lunged towards Evan, its serrated teeth seeking purchase in the flesh of his leg. The underwater ballet metamorphosed into a frantic struggle for survival. Caught in the jaws of nature's fury, Evan grappled with the relentless assailant. The initial shock gave way to a primal surge of adrenaline as pain seared through his leg. The once serene depths transformed into a battleground, where the laws of nature played out in an unyielding crescendo. As Evan fought to free himself from the jaws of the hammerhead, his movements became erratic. Undeterred by the diver's struggle, the shark persisted in its assault, driven by the ancient call for survival. In the silent expanse, Evan's muffled cries merged with the ambient sounds of the ocean, unheard by those on the surface. The struggle continued an elemental tableau of life and death beneath the waves. The hammerhead, a relentless force of nature, maintained its grip on Evan's leg, each thrash of its powerful form amplifying the intensity of the underwater drama. Moments stretched into an eternity as Evan grappled with the realization that he had become an unwitting participant in the age-old saga of predator and prey. In the depths of the underwater Colosseum, the struggle reached a climax. Drawing on reserves of strength forged in the crucible of adversity, Evan freed himself from the shark's grasp. The creature, momentarily thwarted, circled in the distance, a silent sentinel watching the aftermath of its aggressive dance. As Evan ascended, blood trailing in his wake, the ocean retained its secrets. The attack, a fleeting yet profound moment in the cosmic ballet of existence, left indomitable imprints on man and beast. Gasping for breath, Evan surfaced, the taste of salt mingling with the metallic tang of blood. The rhythmic lapping of the waves against the shore mocks the intensity of the recent underwater battle. Struggling against the pain radiating from his leg, Evan mustered the strength to signal for help. Unaware of the subaquatic struggle, the boat's crew rushed to Evan's aid. As they hoisted him aboard, the reality of the encounter sank in. A brush with the primal, an altercation with nature's unyielding hierarchy. The sting of visible and concealed wounds tainted the taste of victory over the Hammerhead's relentless assault. On board, the makeshift first aid commenced. Marmarred by the serrated teeth of the Hammerhead, Evan's leg bore the unmistakable imprint of the ocean's aggression. With a blend of urgency and precision, the crew fashioned a tourniquet to stem the blood flow. Every moment they counted as they navigated the vessel back to the shore. The engine drone became a metronome, marking time with Evan's labored breaths. As the boat docked, a waiting ambulance heralded the next chapter in Evan's odyssey. From the ocean's depths to the sterile embrace of medical intervention. In the ambulance, Evan's journey continued a convergence of modern urgency and primordial resilience. The paramedics, efficient in their routine, assessed the extent of the injuries. The news relayed with clinical precision painted a stark reality. Lacerations, puncture wounds, 
a testament to the ferocity of the Hammerhead's assault. Arriving at the hospital, Evan was ushered into medical expertise. The medical team, aware of the urgency, embarked on a meticulous dance of treatment, cleaning, suturing, and monitoring the ebb and flow of life. Evan's ordeal, etched in the stitches that crisscrossed his leg, spoke of resilience in the face of nature's unyielding force. The medical staff, a modern-day pantheon of healers, worked in tandem to mitigate the ocean's wrath written on Evan's flesh. The relentless pulse of the heart monitor echoed the tenacity that had enabled him to break free from the hammerhead's clutches. Mindful of the delicate balance between man and ocean, authorities investigated the incident's circumstances. Once an unseen force, the hammerhead became the subject of scrutiny, a symbol of the untamed wild lurking beneath the waves. As Evan convalesced, the narrative of his encounter became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the unpredictable dance between humans and the denizens of the deep. The hospital bed, a temporary sanctuary, bore witness to the indomitable spirit that had propelled Evan to overcome the ocean's aggression. The wounds, both physical and metaphysical, would heal. Still, the imprint of the Hammerhead's attack would forever linger, a testament to the eon's old struggle for survival in the ocean's embrace. In the sun-drenched summer of 2010, the tranquil seaside community of Coral Bay, situated on a secluded island in the Philippines, braced itself for an event that would forever mark its history. The narrative unfolds around a group of close-knit friends, marine conservationist Dr. Adrian Flores, the experienced local guide Luis Santos, and the brave yet compassionate nurse Isabella Garcia. The day began with a sky painted with hues of orange and pink as the trio set sail on the modest yet reliable boat, the Sea Guardian. As they reached the designated dive site, a place revered by the locals for its underwater beauty, the friends prepared themselves for a dive into the unknown, their hearts filled with anticipation and wonder. Adrian led the group with his deep understanding of marine life his eyes always looking for the magnificent creatures that inhabited the coral gardens. With his innate knowledge of the local waters, Luis navigated skillfully, guiding them through the labyrinthine coral formations. With her nurturing spirit, Isabella ensured the safety and well-being of the group, her medical kit always ready. A wonder unfolded before them as they descended into the azure depths, Schools of colorful fish darted between the corals, and graceful sea turtles glided past. The trio was in awe, their spirits uplifted by the beauty surrounding them. However, amidst the vibrant marine life and the mesmerizing coral formations, the ocean harbored creatures that commanded respect and caution. The dive took a terrifying turn when Adrian, venturing slightly away from the group, found himself face to face with a hammerhead shark. The sudden appearance of the predator caught him off guard, his heart pounding in his chest as he maintained eye contact with the creature. The hammerhead shark, possibly agitated by the intrusion into its territory, circled Adrian, its movements becoming increasingly aggressive. Panic surged as Adrian felt a sharp pain in his leg, the hammerhead shark having grazed him with its rough skin and sharp fins. The group's training kicked in as Luis and Isabella rushed to Adrian's aid, forming a human barrier between him and the hammerhead shark. The situation escalated quickly, the water turning a terrifying shade of red as Adrian's leg bled, a clear signal of distress in the marine world. With adrenaline fueling their actions, Luis released a safety flare, the bright light and loud noise startling the hammerhead shark and buying them precious seconds. Isabella, showcasing remarkable courage, supported Adrian, applying pressure to his wound to stem the bleeding. Together they commenced a tense and slow ascent to the surface, the shadow of the hammerhead looming ominously in the depths below, a constant reminder of the fine line between awe and danger in the wild ocean. As they ascended, the water around them seemed to pulse with danger, every shadow a potential threat. Luis led the way, his experienced eyes constantly scanning the surroundings, ready to defend his friends immediately. With a firm grip on Adrian, Isabella swam with determined strokes her face a mask of concentration as she focused on reaching the surface safely with her injured friend. Above them, on the Sea Guardian, the crew had noticed the flare and were in a state of high alert, preparing for an emergency extraction. 
The radio crackled with urgent voices as they coordinated their efforts, ready to act as soon as the divers emerged. With hearts pounding in their chests, the trio broke the surface, their gasps for air piercing the eerie silence that enveloped the sea. The crew on the boat swung into action, throwing out life rings and extending poles to help them aboard. Every second felt like an eternity as they worked to get Adrian safely onto the boat, his leg a painful reminder of the close encounter with the hammerhead shark. Once on board, Isabella transformed from a diver into a medical professional, her hand steady as she administered first aid, cleaning and dressing Adrian's wound with practiced efficiency. Luis, meanwhile, coordinated with the local Coast Guard, his voice shaking as he reported the incident. As they sped back to Coral Bay, each individual lost in their thoughts, the joy of the early morning adventure replaced by a sobering realization of the dangers they had faced. Adrian lay on a makeshift bed, his hand tightly gripping Isabella's as she sat beside him, a pillar of strength in the face of adversity. Upon reaching the shore, a small crowd had gathered, and the news of the incident had spread like wildfire in the close-knit community. Relief washed over the faces of the onlookers as they saw the trio, shaken but alive, stepping off the boat. In the days that followed, Adrian's recovery became a beacon of hope and resilience for the community of Coral Bay. The story of their harrowing encounter with the hammerhead shark resonated with people worldwide, a stark reminder of the beauty and danger that coexisted in the natural world. As Adrian healed, the bond between the trio strengthened, forged in the crucible of danger, and solidified through mutual respect and care for each other. Their tale became one of inspiration, a story of friendship, courage, and the human spirit's ability to prevail in the face of danger. The hammerhead shark, a creature of the deep, remained a symbol of the wild, untamed force of nature, a reminder to treat the ocean with respect and awe. A witness to their tale of survival in the face of one of the worst hammerhead shark attacks of all time. In the summer of 1992, a young Canadian boy named Jaden was immersed in the excitement and anticipation of an unforgettable adventure. Jaden was a diligent student at a Canadian university, with his academic pursuits often consuming his time and attention. However, as the semester ended, he and his fellow students were presented with an opportunity that promised a break from the rigors of university life and the chance to explore the beauty of Indonesia's sea. The promise of this upcoming trip had been a beacon of hope for the weary students who had toiled through their final exams and papers. The prospect of freedom and adventure filled the air, and Jaden couldn't help but feel the excitement coursing through his veins. With the semester's end drawing near, the university had made all the necessary arrangements for the trip. The date for departure had been prominently displayed on the notice board, and the students were given ample time to pack their bags and prepare for the journey of a lifetime. The university had reserved tickets, guaranteeing Jaden and his fellow adventurers a smooth and hassle-free trip. The day of departure arrived, and Jaden eagerly gathered his belongings, a mixture of anticipation and nervous energy coursing through him. He rendezvoused with a close friend at the airport, both punctual and excited about the journey ahead. The university staff would accompany them on this trip, ensuring their safety and guiding them through the wonders of Indonesia. Upon arriving in Indonesia, the university arranged accommodations for the students at a nearby hotel. The weary travelers gratefully settled into their rooms, preparing for the adventures that awaited them tomorrow. Jaden's excitement was at its peak as he drifted off to sleep, visions of sandy beaches and crystal clear waters dancing in his dreams. Jaden and two friends ventured out the following day, eager to explore the coastline. Their youthful enthusiasm led them to walk along the beach without seeking permission or guidance from the university staff. Jaden had always possessed an insatiable wanderlust, and he couldn't resist the allure of the sea. As Jaden strolled along the shoreline, he couldn't help but marvel at the beauty surrounding him. The turquoise waves lapped gently at the shore, and the sun bathed everything in a warm golden glow. He found a spot on the beach and settled down, content to soak in the moment's serenity. Unbeknownst to Jaden, danger lurked beneath the tranquil surface of the water. In the depths, a formidable and fearsome predator, a tiger shark, had already spotted Jaden's figure on the surface. The shark moved silently, its powerful body slicing through the water as it closed on its unsuspecting prey. 
The moment arrived swiftly and without warning. With a sudden burst of speed, the tiger shark lunged at the surface, its dorsal fin cutting through the water like a blade. It struck the floating board Jaden had been standing on, jolting it violently. Jaden lost in his thoughts and the beauty of his surroundings was caught off guard. He hadn't been paying attention to the ominous presence lurking below. As the board wobbled and tilted, Jaden lost his balance and tumbled into the water directly into the path of the hungry tiger shark. In an instant, the tranquil scene was transformed into a nightmarish tableau. The water erupted in a chaotic frenzy of thrashing, churning waves as the shark seized its prey. Jaden's world was plunged into darkness and terror as he felt the jaws of the tiger shark clamp down on him. The horrifying reality of the situation unfolded in the blink of an eye. Jaden's life was extinguished instantly, his body becoming one with the sea. The water turned crimson as his blood mingled with the ocean, creating a gruesome tableau of nature's brutality. Back on the beach, Jaden's friends were paralyzed with shock and fear as they witnessed the unthinkable unfold. Jenna's camera fell to the sand, forgotten as she screamed in horror. They watched helplessly as the tiger shark retreated into the depths, carrying Jaden with it, leaving behind only a trail of crimson in its wake. The boardman, responsible for ensuring the safety of the students, had witnessed the horrifying incident from a distance. He reacted with lightning speed, swimming towards the now empty and bloodied board. Panic and fear coursed through him as he desperately looked for any sign of his friend. But Jaden had vanished in the tiger shark's ruthless jaws. Shaken and traumatized, joyful Jaden's friends called out for help, summoning the university staff to the scene. The news of the tragic incident spread like wildfire among the students who had embarked on this ill-fated adventure. The once joyful trip had turned into a nightmare of unimaginable proportions. In coordination with local authorities, the university staff launched a search and rescue mission in a desperate attempt to recover Jaden's body. Despite their exhaustive efforts, the sea remained unforgiving, refusing to yield its grim secret. The relentless currents and the vast expanse of the ocean thwarted their every attempt to find any trace of their fallen comrade. Days turned into nights, and the search continued, but hope dwindled with each passing moment. The reality of Jaden's loss weighed heavily on the hearts of his friends and the university staff. The once celebratory trip had become a sad and tragic chapter in their lives. Word of the devastating incident reached Jaden's family back in Canada, and they were left in disbelief and despair. The news that their beloved son and best friend had met such a tragic and untimely end was a crushing blow that shattered them. The memory of Jaden's vibrant spirit and his unquenchable thirst for adventure lived on in the hearts of those who had known him. His tragic passing served as a stark reminder of the unpredictable and unforgiving nature of the world a reminder to cherish each moment and each person in our lives. In the end, Jaden's story serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the unpredictable nature of our world. It reminds us to savor every moment, embrace every opportunity, and hold our loved ones close, for we never know when the tides of fate may sweep them away, leaving only memories in their wake. Meet Robert Turner a 58-year-old ocean enthusiast whose passion for underwater exploration led him to the vast expanse off the coast of San Diego. Robert, a seasoned diver who loves the mysteries beneath the waves, was on a chartered trip aboard the Tranquility Vessel. It was August 15, 2001, bathed in the Californian sun as Robert eagerly embarked on a journey to the Aqua Bay, an underwater paradise about 100 miles from the coast. The Aqua Bay, with its rich marine life and vibrant coral formations, beckoned to those seeking the allure of the deep sea. As the tranquility sailed through the open waters, Robert's anticipation mirrored the rhythmic dance of the waves. His fellow divers, equally drawn to the underwater wonders, shared excitement. Little did they know that beneath the azure surface, an unexpected encounter awaited, poised to challenge the tranquility of their expedition. The date, etched in the annals of marine exploration, would mark the convergence of man and the enigmatic denizen of the deep, a hammerhead shark. Like a hidden current, the incident was about to alter the course of Robert's aquatic odyssey. In the silent depths, a silhouette patrolled, the hammerhead shark. A member of the Sphernidae family, 
This underwater marvel boasted a distinctive T-shaped head, earning it the moniker Hammerhead. Its eyes at each end of the cephalofoil offered the shark unparalleled binocular vision, a trait that set it apart in the watery realm. The cephalofoil, a flattened extension of the head, stirred curiosity among marine enthusiasts, sparking debates about its functions. Some speculated it enhanced sensory reception, aiding in maneuvering and prey manipulation. The hammerhead's design granted it superior depth perception, a tool finely honed for the hunt in the sunlit shallows. Found in warm waters along coastlines and continental shelves worldwide, hammerheads defied the solitary nature of many sharks. In behavior unique among their kin, some species assembled in large schools during the day, transforming into solitary hunters under the veil of night. With its allure and mystique, the Aqua Bay became a transient home for these ocean wanderers. As the tranquility approached the Aqua Bay, the warm currents teased the divers with the promise of extraordinary sights. Clad in his diving gear, Robert was ready to immerse himself in the world below, oblivious to the impending twist that would add a chapter to the lore of underwater encounters. The sunlit morning, seemingly serene, belied the stirring events about to unfold beneath the surface. Under the sun-dappled surface, the tranquility that enveloped Robert and his fellow divers veiled the silent approach of the hammerhead. As Robert descended into the azure embrace, the sea unfolded its secrets, and the shark, a shadow in the depths, circled this underwater realm. Just after 8 a.m., the unsuspecting dance between man and shark commenced. Engrossed in the beauty surrounding him, Robert felt the sudden impact, an encounter with the unforeseen. A hammerhead propelled by instinct struck Robert's right hand. Once a canvas of serene exploration, the ocean transformed into an arena of unexpected turmoil. The interaction was swift, devoid of malice, driven by the shark's instinctual response. No crescendo of ominous music accompanied this underwater encounter. Instead, the silent depths bore witness to a moment where realms collided. The hammerhead, its sleek form contrasting with the deep blue, left an indelible mark on Robert's hand. An EMT on board equipped with basic first aid responded swiftly. The boat, aptly named Tranquility, became the stage for a different kind of rescue. The Coast Guard's flight surgeon, assessing the situation from afar, recommended an airlift for Robert. The helicopter crew descended upon the Tranquility. A rescuer, tethered to the helicopter, swiftly approached, securing Robert to a stretcher. In an aerial ballet of rescue, the crew lifted him from the vessel. Robert, now a passenger in the airborne ballet, soared towards medical assistance at a medical center in Hillcrest. Stable yet marked by the unexpected encounter, Robert's journey continued in the care of medical professionals. Back on the tranquility, questions lingered like ripples on the water's surface. Why did the hammerhead choose this particular moment for its silent approach? The charter boat company, a silent witness to the underwater drama, remained elusive to inquiries. The incident marked an anomaly in the tapestry of shark encounters. Hammerhead attacks, rare in the records of marine exploration, defied the conventional narrative. Mike Price, an assistant curator of fishes at SeaWorld, weighed in, emphasizing the scarcity of documented hammerhead attacks since the 1950s. The hammerhead, likely a scalloped species, measured up to seven feet long. Its presence near the Aqua Bay, a sea mountain attracting diverse marine life, hinted at the mysteries that unfolded beneath the surface. The warm currents, drawing scalloped heads to aggregate, created a tableau of nature's whims. Often depicted as sea monsters, sharks harbor complexities that elude easy characterization. While hammerheads by nature are non-aggressive when approached by divers, their instinctual defense mechanisms spring to action if threatened. In the silent ballet of the deep, Teeth and jaws become tools of defense for creatures that share the waters with those who seek to explore their realms. As Robert convalesced, the enigma of why the hammerhead chose this moment lingered. The silent waters off San Diego, a canvas of exploration, bore witness to a unique chapter where the boundaries between man and ocean predator blurred, leaving an indelible tale etched in the fluid pages of maritime history. Arif Wijaya was a young fisherman who had spent his entire life living by the seas of Nusa Penida, southeast of Bali, Indonesia. 
He would venture into the deep waters with every sunrise to earn a livelihood. Fishing was not just a way of survival for him. It was a bond he had forged with the vast oceans surrounding his island home. One bright morning as the sun painted the sky with hues of orange and pink, Arif set out to sea with his closest companions, his childhood friends and fellow fishermen. The weather was serene and the waters calm, which foretold a prosperous day of fishing. Excitement and laughter filled the air as they embarked on their journey. As they sailed further into the blue expanse, a strange sense of anticipation hung in the air. The waters seemed unusually quiet, as if nature itself held its breath. Suddenly, a reef's sharp eyes caught a glimpse of something ominous lurking beneath the surface. A massive shadow approached their boat with purpose, a tiger shark. Fear gripped their hearts as the monstrous creature closed in on them with alarming speed. Arif and his friends strained their muscles, trying to paddle away from the looming danger. But the shark's power was unmatched. It rammed into their boat with an overwhelming force, toppling it with an ear-splitting crash. Chaos erupted as the men found themselves submerged in the unforgiving sea. The cold water embraced Arif's body, and his heart raced as he struggled to regain his senses. Panic and adrenaline coursed through his veins as he surfaced to find the terrifying sight of the shark circling nearby. Without hesitation, Arif began to swim frantically towards the distant shore. His friends were equally desperate, each fighting for survival in the vast expanse of water. The shark, however, was relentless, closing in on them with each passing moment. As the ocean's apex predator closed in on Arif, it moved with lightning speed, its jaws wide open revealing rows of sharp teeth ready to cut through his delicate flesh. The creature's jaws snapped shut around Arif's leg in an instant. The sheer force of the attack crushed bone and ripped through layers of flesh, creating a gory spray of blood that mixed with the surrounding seawater. Arif's screams were drowned by the vast ocean as he desperately clutched his mangled limb, his vision blurred by shock and agony. Despite his struggle, the predator was relentless showing a chilling display of primal brutality. With a violent jerk, it started dragging him deeper into the dark abyss of the ocean. The water around him turned murky with his own blood, and the weight of his waterlogged clothes made it even harder for him to escape the creature's clutches. Each movement intensified the torture coursing through his shattered leg, and he could feel the creature's teeth digging deeper, threatening to tear his limb apart. Time seemed to slow down as Arif grappled with the realization that he might not escape this horrifying encounter. He could feel the pressure of the ocean weighing down on him, threatening to suffocate him as he struggled to free himself from the relentless jaws of the tiger shark. With adrenaline coursing through his veins and an indomitable spirit of self-preservation, Arif fought back. He would not give up without putting up a battle against the shark. Though his vision was unclear, Arif kept pushing, scratching, and clawing at the predator. He was hoping to land a blow to the shark's sensitive nose or claw at its eyes or gills. He was willing to try anything, hoping it would make a difference. Miraculously, his attacks hit the vulnerable spot. Arif managed to claw at the shark's eyes. He knew he had to hold on and never let go, as this was the only way he could deter the shark's attack. The shark jerked violently and recoiled in pain, giving Arif a short respite from the gruesome ordeal. Arif pushed himself upward with a newfound resolve, using all his strength for the tough challenge ahead. The pain in his badly injured leg was excruciating, as if sharp needles were stabbing into his bones. The salt water seeped into his wounds, making the arduous journey toward the surface more excruciating. The journey to the water's surface felt like it would never end. Every stroke required a tremendous effort, and Arif's heavy limbs protested against the strain. But driven by sheer determination, he kept going, getting closer and closer to the life-saving air above. Finally, it was like he was rising from the depths of darkness. Arif's hand broke through the water's surface, and he desperately gasped for air, his chest heaving and his heart pounding like a drum. Yet the momentary relief of reaching the surface was overshadowed by the looming presence of the shark below, a haunting reminder that danger still surrounded him. His blood trailed behind him in the water, serving as a distressing signal for the relentless predator that persisted in its pursuit. His friends managed to reach the shore and watched in horror as the terrifying drama unfolded. Desperate for Arif's safety, 
they braced themselves to dive back into the water. To their relief, they saw him resurface. They rushed to pull him to safety, his injured leg trailing crimson in the water. With trembling hands, they applied pressure to the wound, doing their best to stem the blood flow. Arif's breathing was labored, and his eyes reflected a near-death experience. With immense effort, they managed to carry him back to the village, where the island's limited medical facilities were put to use. The village elders gathered, offering prayers and remedies passed down through generations. It was a race against time, a battle between life and death. Arif's physical wounds began to heal as the days turned into weeks, but the psychological scars ran deep. He found solace in the arms of his family and friends, who rallied around him, assuring him that he was not alone in this struggle. In 1993, a remarkable woman named Poppy lived in the beautiful state of California. Poppy was not just an ordinary woman. She held the prestigious position of being a professor at the University of California. Her life was an exciting journey filled with passion, family, and unexpected adventures. Poppy was a woman of diverse interests and had an insatiable wanderlust. During her university years, she cultivated a deep passion for traveling and exploring the world's oceans. After her studies, Poppy got married and started a family. However, life took an unexpected turn when she lost her husband. Despite the challenges, Poppy remained resilient and focused on securing a bright future for her two children. Her dreams of oceanic exploration were temporarily set aside as she worked tirelessly to provide for her family. One day, as she sat in her office, something extraordinary happened. A group of her fellow professors joined her for a coffee break and their conversation took an unexpected turn toward their personal lives. As they shared their stories and experiences, Poppy's closest friend mentioned an ocean tour with her family. Poppy's heart skipped a beat as she listened to her friend's exciting tales of oceanic exploration. Memories of her passion for the sea came rushing back, and she decided it was time to introduce her children to the ocean's wonders. That evening, during dinner, Poppy excitedly shared her plan for a California ocean tour with her son and daughter. Their eyes sparkled with anticipation as they heard about the adventure awaited them. Poppy wasted no time and made all the necessary arrangements. The family was set to embark on their journey on a sunny Sunday morning. In the days leading up to the tour, Poppy went through her old bags, reminiscing about her past adventures. She carefully packed her swimsuit filled with memories of her youthful explorations and purchased new swimsuits for her children, preparing for a new chapter of family adventures. On that Sunday morning, after a hearty breakfast, the family set off for the California coast. The ocean, a vast expanse of sparkling blue stretched as far as the eye could see, welcomed them as they arrived. Most people on the beach enjoyed the shoreline, building sandcastles and playing in the gentle waves. However, Poppy's eyes were drawn to a magnificent ship anchored nearby. They made their way to the ship with bags in hand and quickly changed into their swimsuits. The excitement was palpable as they climbed aboard. The ship embarked on its journey, carrying the eager passengers into the heart of the ocean. Laughter and joy filled the air as people enjoyed the picturesque views and the ship's gentle rocking. As the vessel ventured further into the ocean, some passengers couldn't resist the temptation and leaped into the refreshing water. Poppy, too, found it impossible to resist the allure of the ocean. She dipped while her children stayed on the ship, playing with the other youngsters. It had been years since she had swum in the open sea, and the sensation of the water embracing her was exhilarating. However, as she swam further from the ship, a sudden urge to relieve herself overtook her. In the depths of the ocean, she paused to do so. Little did she know that this simple act would change the course of her day and her life. As Poppy floats in the water, she notices something immense moving in the distance. Her heart raced as she realized it was a colossal shark. Panic set in as the shark closed in on her, its size and power striking fear into her heart. In an instant, the shark lunged, its jaws snapping dangerously close to Poppy's leg. Pain surged through her. But in desperation, Poppy remembered the advice she had once read about shark encounters. She aimed for the shark's eyes and struck with all her might. Miraculously, her desperate act worked, and the shark released its grip on her leg. In a flurry of adrenaline, she swam as fast as she could back to the ship's safety, her heart pounding with fear and relief. 
As Poppy clung to the ship's side, her body trembling, she cried out for help. Her fellow passengers quickly rushed to her aid, pulling her back on board. It was a harrowing experience that left her in excruciating pain, with her leg badly wounded. The ship immediately changed course, heading back to the California coast. The crew on board contacted the local authorities and medical professionals waiting on the shore to assist. Poppy's children were troubled as they saw their mother's bloodied leg and the pain etched on her face. They clung to her, their worry and fear evident. The news of a shark attack quickly spread among the passengers, creating a sense of shock and concern. Upon reaching the shore, medical professionals rushed to Poppy's side. They administered immediate first aid and carefully examined her injuries. The extent of the damage was severe, and they decided to transport her to a nearby hospital for further treatment. Word of the shark attack reached Poppy's relatives, who hurried to the hospital to be by her side. They comforted her worried children and ensured they were looked after during this traumatic ordeal. In the hospital, doctors worked tirelessly to stabilize Poppy's condition. The shark's attack had damaged a significant portion of her leg, and surgery was necessary to repair the wounds. Poppy underwent surgical procedures and was hospitalized for two weeks to monitor her recovery. During her hospital stay, Poppy received an outpouring of support from friends, family, and even students who had heard about her ordeal. They visited her in the hospital, bringing her and her children well wishes and words of encouragement. After two weeks of intensive care, Poppy's condition improved significantly. The doctors deemed her stable enough to be discharged, although she would require ongoing rehabilitation to regain full use of her injured leg. As Poppy returned home with her children, she did so with a newfound appreciation for life and the importance of pursuing one's passions. The near-death experience had reminded her of her love for the ocean, and she vowed to share that love with her children, albeit with more caution and respect for the sea's inherent dangers. Poppy's journey from a dedicated professor to a shark attack survivor was a testament to the unpredictability of life. It was a story of courage, family bonds, and the enduring spirit of a woman who refused to let adversity define her. Her passion for the ocean had brought her face to face with danger, but it had also revealed the depth of her strength and the love of those around her. On a sunny Saturday morning, Munda Beach in Melbourne, Australia, basked in the glow of a promising day. The golden sands stretched along the shoreline, caressed by gentle waves that whispered the allure of the ocean. Families and friends gathered on the beach, embracing the opportunity to enjoy the sea and the sun's warmth. Among them was the Robertson family, a tight-knit foursome who had come to Munda Beach to savor a day of surfing. Oliver, the father, and his two teenage children, Charlotte and Oscar, were seasoned surfers. They had honed their skills on these waves and reveled in the excitement surfing brought. Willow, the mother, preferred to stay on the shore, content in watching her family carve through the waves. With their boards in tow, Oliver and his children paddled out into the ocean the salt-kissed breeze enveloping them. They navigated the waters expertly, finding the perfect spot to catch the rolled-in breaks. Willow stood on the shoreline, her heart filled with pride and a sense of serenity as she watched her family embrace the joy of the sea. As the waves rose and fell, Charlotte and Oscar displayed their agility and skill, riding the surf with grace and confidence. Their laughter and shouts of delight echoed over the water, a testament to their bond as siblings and surfers. Oliver, their father, joined in the exhilaration, carving his way through the waves with the same enthusiasm he had passed on to his children. Munda Beach, with its unspoiled beauty, provided the perfect backdrop for this family's shared passion. The waves glistened in the sunlight, their rhythm a comforting melody that had accompanied countless days of surfing. However, on this otherwise idyllic morning, a shadow of dread began to cast its pall over Willow. She watched from the shore as a large, ominous shape moved beneath the water. The sight sent a chill through her, a sense of impending danger that she couldn't ignore. Willow recognized the shadow for what it was, a bull shark, a predator that struck fear into the hearts of all who understood its deadly nature. Her cries for help were frantic and she waved her arms wildly, hoping to alert her family to the imminent peril. But the ocean, with its vast expanse and the noise of the waves, muffled her voice. 
Willow's heart raced, knowing the time was slipping away and her family was in grave danger. The bull shark, propelled by its predatory instincts, moved with unnerving speed, closing in on Oliver, Charlotte, and Oscar. As they rode the waves, blissfully unaware of the approaching menace, the shark burst from the water, jaws agape, and struck with brutal force. In an instant, Oscar was knocked from his surfboard, his scream echoing through the surf in the open air. Oliver and Charlotte reacted with lightning speed, abandoning their boards to rush to Oscar's aid. But the shark was faster, its mighty jaws clamping down on Oscar's leg, rendering his cries of agony inaudible beneath the relentless roar of the ocean. The struggle that unfolded in those harrowing moments was a desperate battle for Oscar's life. Oliver and Charlotte fought fiercely to free their son and brother from the savage grasp of the bull shark. Their faces etched with anguish and determination. The shark's strength was astonishing, and its grip on Oscar was unwavering. It dragged the young surfer beneath the waves, plunging the family into an abyss of terror and despair. Their cries for help reverberated through the beach, but the outcome of this brutal encounter was far from certain. As Oliver and Charlotte continued to grapple with the shark, they could feel the fading strength of their beloved Oscar. The saltwater churned crimson with the battle's brutality, and their desperation mounted with each passing second. In the distance, Willow stood frozen on the shore, her horror-stricken gaze locked on the unforgiving spectacle unfolding in the water. Her voice was lost amidst the tumult, and she could only watch helplessly as the shark disappeared into the depths, dragging Oscar with it. The ocean, with its vast expanse, swallowed the young surfer, its depths holding the terrible secret of his fate. Willow, her voice choked with sobs, collapsed onto the sandy shore, her tears mingling with the salt water. The beach, once a place of leisure and family bonding, was now a scene of tragedy. The gathered onlookers were left in stunned silence, their faces etched with sorrow as they contemplated the heart-wrenching loss that had unfolded before them. Munda Beach, once a haven of beauty and serenity, had been irrevocably altered by the horrors of that day. As the hours passed and the waves continued to roll in with unrelenting indifference, the Robertson family clung to one another, their grief and pain too profound for words. Willow, once a witness to the joy of her family's surfing adventures, was now a mourner at the shore, forever haunted by the memory of that fateful day when they lost Oscar. In the vibrant spring of 2005, the coastal town of Sunnyside, nestled along the pristine shores of Australia, became the epicenter of an event that would resonate deeply within the hearts of its inhabitants. The focal point of this tale is the energetic and fearless Rebecca Turner, accompanied by her close friends, the astute Oliver Hayes, and the experienced boat captain, Aidan McCarthy. United by a shared passion for the sea and its mysteries, they ventured into the open sea aboard their vessel to explore the underwater wonders that the region had to offer. The morning sun cast golden rays on the tranquil sea as they reached their dive site, a region known for its congregation of diverse marine life. The group prepared meticulously, ensuring every safety measure was in place before they submerged into the underwater realm, a world of wonder and unpredicted dangers. Rebecca led the snorkeling expedition, her heart pulsating with excitement and reverence for the ocean and its inhabitants. Oliver followed closely, his hands adeptly maneuvering the underwater camera to document their findings. Aiden remained on the boat, vigilant and ready to assist his friends in any way necessary. As they delved deeper, the underwater paradise unveiled its treasures, vibrant coral gardens teeming with life and schools of fish painting streaks of color in the crystal clear waters. Yet amidst this beauty, the ocean harbored creatures that demanded respect and caution, the hammerhead sharks being one of them. The tranquility was shattered when a large hammerhead shark appeared from the blue abyss, its eyes fixed on Rebecca. The sudden encounter with the formidable predator sent a surge of panic through her. The shark circled the group, displaying signs of agitation, its powerful body gliding ominously close. In a heart-stopping moment, the shark lunged, its jaws snapping shut on Rebecca's arm, leaving a deep gash. The sea turned into a battlefield as Oliver and Rebecca fought to fend off the shark, their movements frantic yet determined. Oliver released a cloud of bubbles from his snorkeling gear, temporarily disorienting the shark and providing them a narrow window of opportunity to initiate their escape plan. 
With adrenaline surging through their veins, they began a controlled ascent, Oliver supporting Rebecca, who bravely endured the pain, her face a canvas of fear and determination. Above them, Aiden had perceived the danger and was orchestrating a rapid response, ready to retrieve his friends from the clutches of the dangerous sea. As they neared the surface, the shadow of the hammerhead loomed ominously, a relentless pursuer in their desperate race to safety. Despite her injury, Rebecca propelled herself with a fierce determination, her face a canvas of pain and resolve. Oliver stayed by her side, a protective shield ready to defend her at all costs. Above them, Aiden was a whirlwind of activity, his experienced eyes scanning the turbulent waters as he prepared to haul his friends to safety. The boat's engine roared to life, ready to spring into action at a moment's notice. Every second was crucial, a fine line between safety and disaster. With hearts pounding like thunderous drums, Rebecca and Oliver broke the surface, their desperate gasps for air breaking the eerie silence that enveloped the sea. With lightning speed, Aiden threw out life rings and extended a helping hand, pulling them aboard with Herculean strength. The boat rocked violently as they clambered on, the hammerhead silhouette disappearing into the deep, a grim reminder of the danger that lurked below. Once on board, the urgency didn't diminish. Oliver quickly fashioned a tourniquet from a towel, staunching the blood flow from Rebecca's arm. His hands moved with a frantic yet controlled pace, his face a mask of concentration as he worked to stabilize her condition. Rebecca lay on the deck, her breaths coming in ragged gasps, her face pale but her spirit unbroken, a testimony to her incredible resilience. Aiden navigated the boat back to Sunnyside with speed born of desperation, his face a grim mask of determination. The radio crackled with urgent voices as he relayed their situation to the Coast Guard, his voice shaking but resolute, a beacon of strength in the chaos. As they reached the shore, a crowd had gathered, their faces a sea of concern and fear. The emergency services were on standby, ready to tend to Rebecca's injuries. The community rallied, their faces reflecting relief and admiration as they witnessed the brave trio return, shaken but alive, a testimony to their courage and the unyielding bond of friendship. In the following days, Rebecca's recovery became a symbol of the community's spirit, her bravery echoing in the hearts of the Sunnyside residents. As they recounted their tale to friends and family, the hammerhead shark remained a silent actor in their story, a creature of the deep, a reminder of the wild, untamed force of nature, a witness to their tale of survival in the face of one of the worst hammerhead shark attacks of all time. Linda was a 45-year-old woman Australian town resident who had always enjoyed life's little pleasures and adventures. She discovered she had more free time after marrying and raising her kids. Luckily, she was surrounded by a small but close-knit community that shared her enthusiasm and inventiveness. Linda has a unique group of pals. They all had extraordinarily inventive imaginations and a preference for looking for fun and excitement in all facets of life. They knew how to make the most of their time together, whether by traveling to new locations, engaging in hobbies, or just spending time together. Linda's life tragically changed when her spouse died in a vehicle accident, leaving her a widow. She struggled to deal with the loss and frequently turned to her friends for comfort because they offered her much-needed companionship and support. One day, she had a brilliant idea while thinking about bringing some excitement back into her life. She decided to organize a sea tour of Australia. She was drawn to the huge ocean's attraction and the prospect of fresh experiences. She was confident that her pals, with their boundless energy, would make the ideal traveling companions. Linda excitedly texted her friends about her plans for the sea cruise. She wanted them to come on this great journey with her. Following numerous deliberations and scheduling, Linda's best friend Maria consented to travel with her. The two pals planned their sea excursion and settled on the 13th of the month as their date. They were all looking forward to seeing the tranquility and beauty of the Australian sea as they drove their cars to their destination. As she looked to the sea, Linda thought, what if they could use a board or other watercraft to explore the waters? She enthusiastically proposed this idea to Maria, who enthusiastically accepted the notion. They decided to rent a board to make the most of their sea excursion. After renting some boards, Linda and Maria set out on their underwater adventure. 
They were excited to record their adventures and capture the splendor of the water, so they brought their cameras. Maria, in particular, was passionate about making movies and sharing them with her friends and fans, but they were unprepared for a tiger shark's sudden and unwanted arrival, regarded as one of the ocean's most dangerous predators. The worst-case scenario occurred while they enjoyed the calm surroundings and paddled deeper into the sea. When the tiger shark finally surfaced, Linda and Maria felt a surge of terror accompany them. Fearing for their lives, they attempted valiantly to restore their equilibrium on the board. But panic struck. The tiger shark attacked during the ensuing turmoil, snaking Linda's arms with strong teeth. While her friend Maria heroically attempted to help her, she let out an agonized scream. Maria was, however, also caught in the board during the frantic struggle, making it nearly impossible for her to escape the predator's hold. The savage shark tore at Linda's arms, causing blood to fill the water. As they struggled to deal with the catastrophic situation, time appeared to slow down and the anguish became unbearable. Maria was stuck and could not help, so the odds seemed overwhelming. The tiger shark plunged deeply into the water, losing sight of itself in a desperate attempt to survive. This provided a little relief for Linda and Maria. Linda felt her power ebbing as she started to lose consciousness while she held her wounded arms. Realizing the situation's urgency, Maria mustered her last strength and broke free from the board. She swam rapidly back to Linda, who was now teetering on unconsciousness. Maria struggled to lift Linda onto the board and paddled back to the shore as quickly as possible. Panic and anxiety drove her determination because she knew every second counted. When they got to the coast, Maria hurried Linda to the closest parking area near the shore. Linda was critically injured, her arms torn and gushing blood. Pain and fear shot through her, making it difficult for her to remain aware. Maria quickly assisted Linda into her car and drove quickly to the closest hospital. Her veins were filled with panic and adrenaline as she fervently begged for Linda's survival. Maria didn't take long to arrive at the hospital. After she hurried Linda into the emergency department, Medical professionals and nurses evaluated her injuries to see how serious they were. They performed scans and tests, which showed how much damage there was. It was obvious that Linda required emergency surgery to preserve her arms and potentially her life. After countless hours of labor by the physicians to stabilize her, Linda was hospitalized for two months. To restore her ability to use her arms, Linda underwent numerous hospital procedures and a strenuous rehabilitation regimen. She was in excruciating bodily and mental agony. Still, she found strength in the encouragement of her friends and family, especially Maria, who had supported her during that ill-fated sea voyage. Linda remembered the day that had permanently altered her life as she began to heal gradually. The sea, which formerly stood for beauty and adventure, is now associated with trauma and danger. She was aware that the wounds from that day would follow her for the rest of her life, both emotionally and physically. The event also acted as a sharp reminder of how unpredictable life can be and how crucial it is to cherish each moment. Linda promised herself that while pursuing pleasure and adventure, she would do so with a renewed appreciation for the natural world and a reminder always to put safety first. Ultimately, Linda's fortitude and her friend's unfailing support enabled her to heal physically and emotionally. Although the terrifying encounter she had with the tiger shark will always haunt her, it also demonstrates the strength of friendship and the tenacity of the human heart. On a warm, sunny day in the summer of 2003, Barty Beach in Sydney was alive with the rhythmic sounds of crashing waves and the joyous laughter of beachgoers. Families and friends gathered along the shoreline basking in the golden rays of the sun. Among the crowd was the Lee family who had come to enjoy a day of sun and surf. Benjamin Lee, a 20-year-old avid surfer, had always connected deeply to the ocean. Barty Beach was known for its pristine waters and perfect waves, making it a haven for surfers. Its sandy shores stretched for miles, framed by rocky cliffs and lush vegetation. The salt-scented breeze carried the promise of adventure, and as Benjamin waxed his board, he couldn't help but feel the excitement building inside him. Benjamin's family watched from the shoreline, their hearts filled with pride and worry. Something was captivating about the sight of their son and brother taking on the mighty waves. A view they had witnessed countless times before. 
But today, an undercurrent of anxiety lingered in the air. The sun was now at its zenith, casting a brilliant reflection over the Azure Sea. Benjamin, clad in his vibrant wetsuit, paddled out toward the break, his surfboard bobbing gracefully on the water's surface. With each stroke, he felt the cool embrace of the ocean, a sensation that always invigorated him. Out in the distance, the waves were building, curling into perfect cylinders that promised exhilarating rides. Benjamin's heart raced with anticipation as he waited for the right moment to catch the wave that would carry him back to shore. He knew the ocean well, or so he thought. As Benjamin scanned the horizon for the ideal wave, an unusual unease began to stir. He couldn't quite grasp it, but something felt different today. It was as though the ocean itself was whispering a warning, a subtle message that he couldn't decipher. Unbeknownst to Benjamin, lurking beneath the pristine surface of the water, a massive bull shark was also on the hunt. Drawn by the commotion of surfers and the promise of an easy meal, the shark moved silently, its powerful body slicing through the water with uncanny stealth. The Lee family standing together on the beach watched Benjamin with bated breath. Their anxiety was now impossible to ignore, and their gaze was fixed on the lone figure of their beloved surfer. His younger sister Lily clung to her mother's hand, her wide eyes filled with excitement and fear. Just as Benjamin positioned himself to catch a wave, the shark's primal instincts took over. With a swift, lethal movement, it lunged from beneath the water, jaws agape, and clamped down on Benjamin's leg. The force of the attack sent Benjamin toppling from his board, his cry of pain silenced by the roar of the surf. The shark's savage grip on Benjamin's leg was unrelenting, and with terrifying strength it dragged him beneath the surface. The salt water churned crimson as Benjamin's lifeblood mingled with the sea. Benjamin's family stood frozen in horror, unable to comprehend the nightmare unfolding before them. They could only watch, powerless, as the ocean claimed their son and brother. As Benjamin was pulled deeper into the depths, his mind raced with a flurry of thoughts and emotions. The pain radiating from his leg was excruciating, and he struggled to maintain his composure. He knew that his chances of survival were rapidly diminishing with each passing moment, but a fierce determination to fight for his life coursed through his veins. The underwater world was a realm of shadows and muted colors, and Benjamin's senses were heightened in the face of danger. He could feel the shark's immense power and the relentless pull of the current. With every ounce of strength he could muster, he attempted to free himself from the shark's vice-like grip. Back on the beach, Benjamin's family was not alone in their shock and terror. The other beachgoers who had witnessed the horrifying attack had gathered, their voices raised in a cacophony of disbelief and fear. Some dialed emergency services, desperately pleading for help. Minutes felt like hours as Benjamin and the bull shark fought for survival beneath the waves. With his heart pounding and adrenaline surging through his veins, Benjamin clung to the belief that he could outwit the relentless predator. But the ocean, with its vast depths and unfathomable mysteries, was a relentless opponent. Benjamin's lungs burned for air, and his strength waned as he grappled with the shark. His vision grew blurry, and his consciousness teetered on the edge of darkness. At the water's edge, the Lee family and the gathered onlookers held their breath, their eyes straining to catch any glimpse of Benjamin. The paramedics and rescue teams, alerted by the frantic calls for help, were racing toward the scene, but time was slipping away. In the depths of the ocean, Benjamin's struggle was nearing its end. His body weakened and his thoughts turned to his family, the faces of his loved ones flashing before his eyes. As the battle raged, the ocean began relinquishing its grip on Benjamin. With a final burst of strength, he broke free from the shark's jaws. He pushed himself toward the surface, gasping for air, his survival instinct prevailing against all odds. Benjamin's emergence from the water was a moment of relief and disbelief. He was battered, his body bearing the scars of the harrowing encounter, but he was alive. The beach erupted in cheers and applause as his family rushed to his side, their faces wet with tears of joy and relief. The bull shark, having lost its prey, vanished back into the depths of the ocean, a silent, enigmatic predator that continued to haunt the waters. Benjamin's encounter with the beast had left an indelible mark on him, a reminder of the fragility of human life in the face of nature's incredible power. In the days and weeks that followed, 
Benjamin's story of survival became a testament to the strength of the human spirit. He endured a long and arduous recovery, both physical and emotional, but his love for the ocean remained undiminished. His family, forever marked by the day they nearly lost him, held on to the gratitude that their son and brother had been spared from the jaws of the deep. Barty Beach, with its azure waters and golden sands, continued to be a haven for surfers and beachgoers. The ocean, as majestic and alluring as ever, retained its enigmatic allure. Benjamin Lee's story, a tale of resilience and survival, served as a powerful reminder of the unpredictable and untamable nature of the sea. Jenny and Paul had been looking forward to their honeymoon for months. They had met three years ago at a mutual friend's party and immediately hit it off. They shared a love of adventure, nature, and travel. After a romantic proposal on a hot air balloon, they decided to tie the knot. For their honeymoon, they chose Tiger Beach, a stunning spot off the coast of West End Grand Bahama Island in the Bahamas. They had heard it was one of the best places to enjoy the clear blue water, the white sand, and the diverse marine life. They booked a cozy bungalow at a beachfront resort, where they spent their first four days relaxing, sunbathing, and making love. They also explored the nearby town, sampled the local cuisine, visited the shops and mingled with the friendly locals. They felt like they were in paradise and couldn't be happier. On their fifth day, Jenny suggested they go snorkeling and wildlife watching at Tiger Beach. Jenny was fascinated by sharks, especially the tiger sharks. She assured Paul it was safe as long as they followed the rules and stayed with the guide, Carlos. They rented snorkeling gear and joined a group with Carlos, an experienced shark expert. He explained the safety precautions. Stay close to the boat, don't touch or feed animals, and don't panic if they see a shark. Carlos said tiger sharks were usually shy and rarely attacked unless provoked. He assured them they might see harmless sharks like lemon or nurse sharks, and maybe even hammerheads or reef sharks. Carlos had a radio and first aid kit on board for emergencies, and he promised a fantastic time with incredible sights. Jenny and Paul felt reassured by Carlos's words and enthusiasm. They put on their masks, snorkel, fins, and life jackets and followed him into the water. They were amazed by the beauty and diversity of the underwater world. They saw colorful fish of all shapes and sizes, swaying coral formations, graceful sea turtles, playful dolphins, and even a stingray. They felt like they were in a dream. They followed Carlos as he led them to a deeper area where he said they might see some sharks. Jenny was excited and hopeful while Paul was nervous and cautious. They scanned the water for any signs of movement or shadows. Suddenly, Jenny spotted something in the distance. It was a large, dark shape that moved slowly and gracefully through the water. She recognized it as a tiger shark. It was about 15 feet long and had distinctive stripes on its body. It looked majestic and powerful. She tapped Paul's shoulder and pointed at the shark. Paul saw it too and felt a surge of fear. He wanted to get away from it as soon as possible. He looked at Carlos for guidance. Carlos saw the shark too and signaled them to stay calm and still. He said it was normal for tiger sharks to approach divers out of curiosity. He said that it would swim by them without harming them. He was wrong. The tiger shark changed its course and headed straight for Paul. Its mouth gaped open and revealed its rows of razor-sharp teeth. It bit down hard on Paul's left arm and shoulder. Paul felt an excruciating pain as the shark tore into his flesh and bone. He screamed in agony and terror. He tried to fight back by punching and clawing at the shark's eyes and gills with his remaining arm. Jenny heard Paul scream and saw his blood spilling into the water. She was horrified and panicked. She wanted to help him but didn't know what to do. Carlos heard Paul scream too and he knew something terrible was happening. He knew that he had to act fast. He grabbed his paddle and swam towards Paul and the shark. He hit the shark's snout with his paddle as hard as possible. He hoped that this would make the shark release Paul and flee. Every paddle hit reverberated throughout the shark's body and Carlos's arms. The shark let go of Paul's shoulder, recoiled in pain, and retreated to the ocean's depths. Upon releasing its deadly bite, the extent of the damage was unfathomable. Rows of puncture wounds lined across Paul's shoulder. Torn flesh and ripped skin exposed parts of his collarbone and shoulder blades. 
Despite being repulsed by the scene, Carlos grabbed Paul's arm and dragged him towards the boat. He shouted for help and told the other tourists to escape the water. Jenny tried to stop Paul's bleeding with her shirt. She cried and prayed for his survival. Carlos called for beach rescue, applying pressure to Paul's wound to keep him conscious. Paul was in shock, losing a lot of blood. He felt cold and weak. He smiled at Jenny, expressing his love for her. Jenny held his remaining hand, reassuring him that everything would be fine. They rushed Paul to the hospital. Jenny accompanied him while Carlos stayed with the other tourists. He apologized, calling it a freak accident he had never seen before. At the hospital, Paul underwent extensive surgery to save his life. Despite having his entire arm amputated, Paul survived the harrowing ordeal in the face of one of the ocean's fiercest predators. Paul went on with his life, although with the aid of a prosthetic arm after months of recovery and therapy. In 1999, in the history of India, there was a young woman named Emma. She was a dedicated student at an Indian university, entirely focused on her studies. To pursue her education, she lived in a dormitory far away from her family, who resided in a small village in India. Emma was in her final year of university when an exciting opportunity came her way. The university planned a farewell tour for the graduating students, which was set to take them to the beautiful shores of California. Every student was thrilled and eager to participate when the university announced this plan. Like her peers, Emma was overjoyed at the prospect of joining this trip. She knew that life might not provide her with such enjoyable opportunities after completing her studies. The tour was scheduled to take place after the midterm exams, specifically on the 23rd of July. As the week of the tour approached, students' excitement grew. Emma, well prepared and enthusiastic, had already packed her bags a day in advance. The girls in the group were busy shopping for swimsuits in anticipation of the seaside adventure. Finally, the long-awaited day arrived. The students were excitedly buzzing, and the university staff joined them at the airport. The university had already arranged and booked all the tickets, ensuring a smooth journey for everyone. Emma and her classmates took pictures at the airport, capturing the moments of anticipation and joy. The check-in process went smoothly, and soon the students were comfortably seated on the plane. The flight was a delightful experience, and they arrived at California Airport on time, around 10 a.m. After a quick meal near their hotel, they couldn't wait to get to the seaside. The university staff had arranged a large van for the students, and they headed towards the beach. Upon reaching the seaside, the students were greeted with a breathtaking ocean view. Many people were already enjoying their time there, and some had set up picnics. Emma and her friends bought some drinks and relished the moment. The sea breeze, the sound of waves, and the cheerful atmosphere filled them with joy. When the university staff proposed a boat trip, some students agreed, while others decided to stay on the shore. Emma was among those who chose to go on the ship with her friends. As the ship ventured further into the water, they changed into their swimming attire, ready to dive into the ocean. They were having a blast, playing and splashing water at each other. However, amidst all the fun, Emma suddenly felt a discomforting urge. She realized she needed to relieve herself and decided to swim further from her friends. While in the water, she couldn't hold it any longer and began urinating. Unbeknownst to her, a massive shark lurked deep beneath the surface. As the shark heard the sound of water and the commotion from the swimmers, it was drawn towards the surface. Suddenly, it breached the water, appearing right where Emma was. The shark's attention was fixed on her legs, and in seconds, it lunged and attacked. Emma felt an excruciating pain as the shark clamped down on her legs. She cried out in agony, her voice muffled by the water. The shark's sudden presence and ferocity had taken everyone by surprise. Emma's friends watched in horror as their friends struggled in the water. Miraculously, the shark released its grip and turned its attention to another target in the water. Emma's friends swam to her rescue, pulling her back onto the ship's safety. It was a traumatic and unexpected turn of events, leaving everyone in shock. The university staff had a doctor on board who promptly administered first aid to Emma. They managed to control the bleeding and gave her pain relief injections. At the hospital, doctors continued to treat Emma's injuries. They advised her to rest and recover. News of the shark attack spread quickly among the students, becoming a haunting memory for Emma's friends and the university community. 
The incident served as a reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the importance of safety precautions. Despite the terrifying encounter, Emma survived the shark attack, and her resilience and the support of her friends and university staff played a crucial role in her recovery. In the years that followed, the story of Emma's shark encounter became a cautionary tale shared among students and the university. It served as a reminder of the need to be cautious when enjoying the beauty of nature, even amid excitement and joy. In the coastal waters off the sun-kissed shores of Florida, Mark Reynolds, an avid kayaker and a man with an unquenchable thirst for the ocean's mysteries, found himself immersed in the aquatic embrace of the archipelago gulf. His weekdays were woven with the threads of routine as a marine biologist, studying the delicate ecosystems that thrived beneath the surface. But come the weekends, Mark shed the lab coat's mantle and embraced the wave's rhythmic dance beneath his kayak. The tranquil, cerulean expanse of the Florida Keys became his refuge, where the ocean language spoke louder than the din of daily life. In these warm, inviting waters, the great hammerhead sharks roamed, a silent testament to the delicate balance that nature orchestrated. With their distinctive hammer-shaped heads, the hammerheads were not mere denizens of the deep. They were guardians of an underwater realm that had captivated Mark since childhood. Their enigmatic nature fueled his imagination, prompting him to embark on countless journeys to understand the secrets they held. Their known species range from a modest 0.9 meters to an impressive 6.0 meters in length, with weights fluctuating between a mere 3 kilograms to a staggering 580 kilograms. A colossal specimen captured off the Florida coast in 1906 tipped the scales at over 680 kilograms attesting to the sheer might these creatures can attain. Cloaked in hues of light gray with a subtle greenish tint, hammerheads navigate the underwater tapestry with a grace that belies their predatory prowess. A distinctive feature sets them apart, the lateral projections on their heads that bestow upon them a hammer-like silhouette. Hammerheads harbor disproportionately small mouths despite their fearsome appearance compared to their shark counterparts. This anatomical peculiarity, coupled with their characteristic hammer-shaped heads, adds a layer of intrigue to their predatory tactics. Costa Rican Marine Conservation and Research Organization, Oceanic, had become a second home for Mark, connecting him with fellow ocean enthusiasts and amplifying his understanding of the marine world. The organization chronicled the lives of these underwater giants, and Mark, in his small way, contributed to the narrative as a silent observer of the oceanic ballet. His weekends filled with the salty breeze and the gentle lullaby of waves unfolded like chapters in a book written by the sea. The kayak became an extension of himself, navigating the ever-shifting tapestry of currents and tides. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the Florida Keys, Mark continued his journey into the nocturnal realm of the Hammerheads. The kayak, a humble vessel in this underwater saga, carried him into the heart of their territory. Little did he know that the routine of his marine biologist weekdays would soon be overshadowed by an encounter that would redefine his understanding of the ocean's pulse. On the 13th of August, 2007, the night unfolded. A lone figure emerged from the depths, a hammerhead shark, its iconic shape cutting through the darkness. Unbeknownst to Mark, this ancient ocean dweller sensed him. Driven by curiosity, the hammerhead approached the kayak with silent grace. Mark, focused on his paddle, remained unaware of the approaching marvel. The hammerhead, a majestic guardian of the seas, circled beneath him, its black eyes fixed on the kayak. The creature, without malice, seemed to acknowledge the intruder in its underwater world. Suddenly, the tranquility shattered. The hammerhead, unpredictable in its impulses, surged forward with energy. Its streamlined form moved toward the kayak, narrowing the gap between man and shark. In this unexpected moment, the vast ocean seemed to shrink, encapsulating the two beings in a shared heartbeat. Now aware of the colossal presence beneath him, Mark felt a surge of adrenaline. The rhythmic paddling turned urgent as the hammerhead attacked with a sudden burst. Its razor-sharp teeth sank into Mark's arm, tearing through flesh and bone. Pain radiated through Mark's body as the kayak rocked in the tumult. The once serene waters transformed into a battleground of survival. 
In the struggle, Mark fought to free his injured arm from the relentless grip of the hammerhead. Blood tainted the surrounding water, marking the intensity of the clash. Despite the aggression, the hammerhead's curiosity seemed insatiable. It circled, still drawn to the wounded kayaker. Fueled by instinct and fear, Mark mustered the strength to defend himself. With a makeshift paddle, he struck back, creating a barrier between him and the relentless predator. The hammerhead, momentarily repelled, retreated into the depths, leaving Mark to grapple with the aftermath. The kayak, a witness to the violent encounter, bobbed in the moonlit waters. Injured and shaken, Mark navigated the vessel back to shore, the echoes of the aggressive clash reverberating in his mind. Mark Reynolds, now ashore, faced the repercussions of the tumultuous encounter with the hammerhead shark. The moonlit night, once a canvas for exploration, now bore witness to the aftermath of nature's untamed fury. His injured arm, a testament to the clash of man and beast, required immediate attention. Local authorities swiftly responded, rushing Mark to the nearby medical facility. The once silent night, he echoed with the urgency of medical professionals working to mend the torn flesh and fractured bone. As news of the aggressive hammerhead encounter spread, marine experts and shark enthusiasts grappled with the puzzling question. Why did the hammerhead attack? Hammerheads, known for their inquisitive nature rather than aggressive tendencies, puzzled the community. Authorities in their investigation delved into the nuances of the encounter. The prevailing theory pointed to the possibility of mistaken identity or a defensive reaction by the hammerhead. In the moonlit waters, the kayak may have appeared as a potential threat, triggering the defensive instincts of the ancient predator. In the quest for understanding, Researchers analyzed the behavior of hammerhead sharks in the region. Unusual environmental factors, changes in prey availability, or an individual shark's unique disposition were considered. The incident, while rare, raised awareness about the intricate balance between humans and marine life. A seasonal phenomenon adds another layer to the hammerhead saga, their mass migration during the summer. In search of calmer waters, these majestic creatures embark on a journey that paints the ocean currents with the undulating dance of hammerhead silhouettes. Mark's recovery became a focal point for medical professionals and those intrigued by the ocean's mysteries. The injuries, though severe, were not life-threatening. Surgical interventions and a regimen of rehabilitation became Mark's new reality. In its elusive retreat, the hammerhead left behind a trail of questions. Was it an isolated incident, or did similar encounters lurk in the shadows of the Florida Keys' depths? Marine biologists embarked on a mission to track and understand the movements of hammerheads in the area, hoping to unravel the mysteries that lingered beneath the surface. In the wake of the attack, local authorities implemented preventive measures. Beaches were temporarily closed, and warnings echoed through the coastal community. It wasn't an indictment of the hammerhead, but a reminder of the shared domain humans and sharks inhabit. The incident sparked conversations about responsible exploration of marine environments. As humans ventured into the ocean's realm, a mutual understanding between species became imperative. The hammerhead's aggression, an anomaly in its behavioral spectrum, underscored the importance of coexisting with the ocean's ancient inhabitants. As the hammerheads navigate the oceanic canvas, their distinct features and behaviors become threads in the rich tapestry of marine life. From their hammer-shaped heads to the collective movements of schools and the seasonal migrations, hammerhead sharks stand as witnesses to and participants in the ever-unfolding narrative of the ocean's wonders. Despite the physical and emotional scars, Mark emerged as a symbol of resilience. His story became a narrative not of fear but of the unpredictable nature of the natural world. As the moon continued to glow on the Florida Keys, the waters held secrets that transcended human comprehension, inviting caution and curiosity in equal measure. In the sun-kissed summer of 2012, the vibrant coastal city of Blue Bay, situated in the heart of Florida, bore witness to an event that would etch itself into the annals of its history. The city, with its golden beaches and turquoise waters, was a haven for tourists and locals alike. The central figure in this narrative is the spirited muralist Elena Rodriguez, who was joined by her fellow artists, the contemplative sculptor Marcus Lee and the vibrant painter Isabella Garcia. 
United in their endeavor to capture the beauty of the ocean through their art, they set out on a boat, venturing into the open sea to find inspiration for their next masterpiece. The day greeted them with a sky painted in hues of azure and gold, as they reached a secluded part of the coast renowned for its rich marine life and pristine coral reefs. The trio was equipped with snorkeling gear, eager to explore the underwater gallery that awaited them. Elena led the group, her spirit resonating with the rhythmic dance of the waves. Marcus and Isabella followed, their senses tuned to the symphony of life that unfolded beneath the waves. A harmonious blend of color and motion captured through the lenses of their underwater cameras. As they immersed themselves in this underwater Eden, they were greeted by a kaleidoscope of colors, a living tapestry woven from swaying sea anemones, darting fish, and the majestic ballet of manta rays. The trio was in awe, their hearts and souls absorbing the vibrant energy that pulsated through this marine paradise. But the ocean, with its beauty, also harbored dangers that lurked in the shadows. Their wonderment turned to fear as a large hammerhead shark emerged from the depths, its predatory eyes scanning the intruders in its territory. The sudden appearance of the formidable creature sent a wave of panic through the group, its powerful form circling them with an increasing intensity. In a terrifying moment of realization, Elena felt a sharp pain as the hammerhead shark bit into her leg. The dreamlike exploration turned into a nightmare as they found themselves in a desperate struggle for survival. Marcus and Isabella rallied, their minds shifting from artists to warriors, ready to protect their friend at all costs. With hearts pounding in their chests, they devised a quick plan, creating a barrier between Elena and the hammerhead shark, using their cameras to create a distraction, giving them a fleeting chance to escape the predator's grasp. The ocean became a canvas of chaos, a frantic race against time as they swam towards the surface, their spirits united in fear and determination. As they ascended, the hammerhead shark pursued a relentless force of nature driven by primal instincts. The trio worked in unison, their movements synchronized in a desperate ballet of survival. Despite her injury, Elena swam with a determination forged from deep within, her face a canvas of pain and resolve. Marcus and Isabella formed a protective barrier around her, their hearts pounding in harmony with the frantic rhythm of the sea. Above the turbulent waters, the boat awaited a beacon of hope amidst the chaos. The engine roared to life as the crew realized the peril unfolding below. Every second was a battle against time, a delicate dance between life and death as they prepared to rescue their friends from the jaws of the unforeseen danger. The trio broke the surface with adrenaline fueling their limbs, their cries piercing the air as they called for help. The crew on the boat responded urgently, throwing out life buoys and extending poles to aid their desperate climb to safety. The hammerhead shark circled below, a dark shadow in the crystalline waters, a reminder of the thin line that separated them from the predator. Once on board, the focus shifted immediately to Elena, her leg bearing the brunt of the hammerhead shark's fierce attack. Marcus and Isabella supported her, their faces a blend of relief and concern as they assessed the damage. The crew sprung into action, applying first aid swiftly and working to stabilize her condition as they sped towards the shore. The radio echoed with urgent calls for medical assistance, the boat cutting through the waves fiercely determined to reach land. The atmosphere was thick with fear and adrenaline, Yet amidst the chaos, a bond strengthened, a testimony to the unyielding spirit of human resilience and camaraderie. As they reached the safety of Blue Bay, a crowd had gathered, drawn by the frantic radio calls and the speeding boat. The emergency services were ready, swiftly transferring Elena to a waiting ambulance, her face pale but her spirit unbroken. In the following days, the community rallied around Elena, her story becoming a beacon of courage and survival. The art community transformed their harrowing experience into a powerful exhibition, a vivid tapestry of paintings, sculptures, and photographs that told a tale of beauty, danger, and the raw power of nature. As they stood before their creations, the trio held a silent pact, a bond forged in the ocean's depths, a testament to their courage and the deep respect for the marine life that inhabited it. The hammerhead shark, a creature of power and mystery, remained a silent witness in their tale, a reminder of the delicate balance between man and nature. 
a chapter in the story of one of the worst hammerhead shark attacks ever. Mudbijo Beach, Queensland, Australia, was renowned for its stunning coastal beauty, with the azure waters of the Pacific Ocean lapping against its golden sands. On a sunny day, the beach was a magnet for surfers and beachgoers, seeking the thrill of riding the waves. Among the sun-kissed crowd was a 17-year-old surfer named Cooper Murphy, who was eager to conquer the surf and savor the exhilaration of the open sea. Cooper was a seasoned surfer, and his passion for riding the waves was a defining aspect of his young life. The endless expanse of the ocean, with its unpredictable and powerful waves, drew him like a siren's call. As he waxed his board on the shore and looked out at the waves, his heart raced with the anticipation of another epic surf session. The beach was alive with the joyous laughter of families and friends, but Cooper was ready to plunge into the ocean alone. With his surfboard under his arm, he ventured into the water, determined to ride the waves at a familiar spot he had always loved. However, beneath the surface of the seemingly tranquil ocean, danger lurked. In the depths, a bull shark prowled, drawn by the scent of fish and the promise of an easy meal. Bull sharks were known for their aggressive nature and the ability to adapt to various environments, including shallow coastal waters. Cooper, blissfully unaware of the predator in the water, began to paddle out beyond the breakers. His muscles worked in harmony with the rhythm of the waves as he sought the perfect wave to ride. As he scanned the horizon for the ideal wave, the bull shark approached with sinister intent. With a sudden violent surge, the shark lunged from the depths and clamped its powerful jaws around Cooper's arm. The searing pain shot through Cooper's body, and the taste of salt water mixed with the metallic tang of blood in his mouth. Cooper's survival instinct kicked in as he fought to escape the shark's grip. With every ounce of strength and resolve, he struggled to escape the predator's deadly hold. The struggle unfolded beneath the surface, a relentless battle for life in the heart of the ocean. Cooper's ordeal unfolded just beyond the shore, a scene hidden from the view of the beachgoers. As he grappled with the shark, the surfers and sunbathers remained unaware of the life-and-death struggle in the depths. During the battle, Cooper's strength began to wane. The pain in his injured arm was excruciating, and the relentless pull of the shark threatened to drag him further into the depths. The shark, with its unwavering determination, seemed an impossible adversary. Cooper's life hung in the balance as he fought to stay afloat and free himself from the shark's grip. Each passing moment brought him closer to exhaustion, and the need for immediate rescue became increasingly urgent. The beachgoers and fellow surfers, joyful pursuits disrupted by the drama unfolding beyond their view, remained oblivious to Cooper's plight. The lifeguards on the beach, however, were on high alert, ever watchful for signs of distress in the water. In the distance, the lifeguard spotted a frantic commotion in the water. The tumultuous struggle between Cooper and the bull shark was now visible, and it was clear that a dire situation had unfolded. Without hesitation, they launched into action, rushing to the scene to provide the much-needed assistance. With the help of the lifeguards, Cooper was pulled from the clutches of the bull shark and safely brought back to the shore. The shark, its predatory mission thwarted, retreated into the ocean's depths. Cooper's face was contorted with pain, but the relief of being on solid ground was palpable. The beach, once filled with laughter and sun-soaked serenity, now held a sobered crowd. As Cooper was rushed to the hospital, his injured arm a testament to the dangerous encounter, the beachgoers were left to contemplate the fragility of human life in the face of nature's tremendous power. At the hospital, Cooper underwent surgery to repair the extensive damage to his arm. The medical team worked tirelessly to mend his injuries, their efforts a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Cooper, with the support of his family and dedicated medical professionals, embarked on a challenging recovery journey. Cooper's story, one of survival and resilience, served as a stark reminder of the inherent risks of swimming and surfing in areas where sharks are known to frequent. The incident at Mudbijo Beach underscored the importance of remaining vigilant and informed about the presence of sharks in the waters. The ocean, with its beauty and majesty, harbored a world of wonder and peril.